deploying a simple logic app. Well, there's really no limit to how deep or how complex a logic app can get. I mean, we can do things like conditional statements. We can do things like try-catch blocks. But in order to really introduce the GUI and a couple key terms with logic apps, we should really start out small. Now, in the Azure App Services course, we actually did deploy a simple logic app in one nugget. We were collecting Twitter hashtag data and streaming it directly into Power BI. So if that floats your boat and seems interesting to you, you can watch that nugget, or you can watch this nugget too, or you can watch both. But in this particular nugget, here's the scenario we're going to be setting up. I want to be notified by email whenever someone uploads something to my blob storage. That introduces the two key concepts or the two key terms that we are going to be talking about first. The first thing is triggers. What is going to kick off our logic app? What is going to make it start running a workflow? And a trigger is what is that is called. Usually this is listening for some sort of event. In this particular case, it's going to be connected to the blob storage, listening for an event to occur where someone uploads a file to blob storage. Once someone uploads that file to blob storage, that is going to trigger the logic app to run, which then runs actions. What are the things that you want to occur? What are the things that you want to have action? You can see that's exactly what's going on over here. Once a file gets created, that is exactly what we're listening for. The action is it gets the file properties, and then it starts the approval process. All of these things are happening as it goes down. And you can see even when we get to the conditional statement where we've sent a mobile notification, we're listening for an if, yes, or a no. And once those have been once those items have been met, it starts an email process here. And even though this kind of looks like there's a lot of steps going on here, this is actually once you get into it and see how easy it is to work with logic apps, you're going to think even this is a simple logic app. So let's fire up the Azure portal, deploy our first logic app, and then set up our triggers and our actions. I am logged into the Azure portal and we are ready to get started deploying logic apps, introducing how the whole thing works and how we build these, how we kick them off and monitor them. So over here on the left hand side, I have logic apps pinned, but you can also go to just create a resource or all services to get started. In fact, I'm going to click on create a resource. We're going to search for logic app and there it is right there, logic app. We'll go ahead and click create and we'll give our logic app a name. I'll just call this basic demo something like that. I have an existing resource group called Logic Apps. We'll use that. It's in the central US. I'll click Create, and that gets started creating a Logic App. Let's click Deployment in Progress just so we can see how long this really takes. Oh, look at that. One second. It took one second to deploy a basic Logic App. Let's click on Basic Demo here to get launched into the Logic App, and you'll see well, it kind of act a little wonky here. So let me just go over here to Logic Apps on the left-hand side. We'll click into Basic Demo, or the Logic App that I've already got here. And what should happen is it actually takes you into the Logic Apps Designer where you can get started building Logic Apps. They've got this nice little YouTube intro video, and they've got some common triggers that you can get started with. Notice that Recurrence is one of the triggers. This is where you can set up a scheduled task, where the trigger is just however many minutes have passed. You've also got the ability to monitor things like FTP servers, or what's even cooler is you have all of these templates down below. And you should really explore these templates just to get a feel for all of the different services that are available to you because they really are amazing. I remember I keep, I keep picking on Slack and Twitter. Here's that message right there. So definitely take the time to explore these because they are really, really cool and how it all seamlessly integrates together. But since we are starting from scratch, I'm going to scroll to the top and we're going to build a blank logic app. We'll click the plus there right next to it. And the first thing it asks you is what is going to be your trigger. And the best way to get started is to just start searching. Or you could go to these little tabs here and explore all of the ones that are available to you. Now, like I said, there are hundreds of connectors, so you're definitely going to want to just use the search function. In this particular case, I'm looking for blob storage because I want to monitor blob storage. There it is right there. Azure Blob Storage. And we are under the trigger section right here. If you scroll down, you can see here's Blob Storage triggers when a blob is added or modified. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We were trying to track when a blob was added to my blob storage. So I'll click on that and that selects my trigger. But we have to give this connection a name. So we'll just call this Blob Con or something like that for a connection. And then we have to choose which storage account we're monitoring. So I'll click this blob storage right here because that's my demo to storage that I'm going to be tracking. We'll click create to create this connection. And then from there, we get to choose which blob container we want to monitor. So I'll click on the 
ticker here, and I've got my CBT Nuggets container. We'll click on that. We can then identify how many blobs we want to have in our results as it scans right here under the interval every three minutes. I'm going to change this to every one minute because this is just a demo. And that's it. That's all there is to setting up the trigger. Now we have to have the action. So if we've got this trigger information, the action is going to be a new step in our workflow. I'll click on new step right here below it. And now I know that I want this to send me an email through my Office 365 account. If I simply search for Outlook, I can see I've got Office 365 Outlook. But you also have Outlook.com if you've got a more generic account, something like if you're using with Microsoft Flow. I'll click Office 365 Outlook, and you can see all of these different options that are available to you when you're using the Outlook app. What I'm really looking for, if you scroll all the way down here, we've got a couple send an email options. Now, there's send an email, which uses the workflow definition language, a custom language built around Microsoft for developing the message of my email. So I want to encourage you to actually get familiar with the workflow definition language because other connectors rely heavily on it. But the send an email v2 preview is definitely what I want to use for this because it's just like working in an Outlook email. Now, of course, I have to connect to my Office 365 account. So I'll click sign in. I'll drag the little authentication thing over here on the right hand side. We'll click on my account. I'm going to choose allow access so it allows access into my Logic app. And there we go. I'm going to be sending an email to myself. I'm going to say the subject is blob was added or modified. And then what's really cool is I can say the blob with the name space. I can now scroll over on the right hand side and I can see all of the data that was passed in from the blob storage. I'll just click on see more here and look at this. Look at all of this data that's going to be passed in from the blob storage in the previous step. You see the trigger not only starts the flow, it collects the information from it. And I can dynamically pass in the data by simply just clicking on it. List of file names here. Boop. There it is. The blob with the name list of file names was added or modified. And that's it. That's all I have to do to build a simple logic app. I'm simply going to click save. And I'm going to click run to start this logic app running. Now it is worth noting you do get billed every time the application is triggered. That is how logic apps work is they're based on consumption. But let's test this thing out. Now what I want to do is hop back to my basic demo right here. I'll just click on it on the top of the screen. And down here under the run history is where I'm going to expect to see the results once I start adding or modifying stuff in my blob storage. I'm going to bring up Azure Storage Explorer here where I've already got my blob container specified. I'm going to upload a file by clicking the upload button. We'll choose upload files. No files selected. I'm just going to choose something like my SQL script that I've written for how to run Polybase in the Azure SQL Essentials course. I'll choose open. I'll choose upload. And after about a minute or so, that logic app trigger is going to fire off and I should expect to see an email saying that that file has been added. <laughs> and after about 30 seconds, I hopped on over to Office 365. Look right there. Right there, blob was added or modified. And if I click on it, did it get the file name right? Look at this, right there, bam, polybase.sql was added or modified. That is how easy it is to get started deploying a simple Logic app. Now in the next nugget, we're gonna deploy something a lot more complicated. We're actually going to build our own API within Logic Apps, and then we're gonna leverage AI, conditional statements, and try-catch blocks all in one nugget to show you just how great Logic Apps can be. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. viewing.